Good morning. How are we doing today? Good welcome, welcome creator. Welcome to Odessa Rose Creates. I'm Robin Schmidt and I'm an independent chalk couture designer. So that means I work with a chalk couture silk screen transfers and chalk paste. So if you're not familiar with that product, I will show you what it's all about. I'm going to make sure I can find myself here on Facebook, make sure we are going and rolling and having a good time today. <laughs> um, never can find it. Let's see. There's my page. There I am. Great. So hi, hi. Say hello if you're watching. I'd love to chat with you. Go ahead and Push that arrow button to somebody that might love to uh, learn about chalking or, cra or a new craft. I'll share it to my own page, my own profile, I should say. All right, so I'm going to go over some of the things I've been making this week, just a few. And let me plug in my camera. It always seems to wear down my camera a little bit. There we go. Okay. Let's see. Hello, Jennifer. Good morning, Leanne and Mary. Carrie. Hi, hi, hi. Let's get this out of the way. So yesterday, uh, we did some little projects. We worked on Chalk Couture's new um, box frame. This is the 5x5. Five it came back in stock yesterday and sold out almost immediately. Uh, but they do have more coming. I think they're on a boat somewhere. And so they are coming. But we do have these in the 5 by 7 We'll be coming in shortly. And they have in the 9 by 12 and the 8 or 6 by 18 Now cool because they're double-sided. This side comes in the brown just like this. But I painted it black. And did uh, trick or treat Halloween on this side and more of just a general fall on this side. So you can just flip it over for the Halloween, a uh, couple weeks of Halloween decorating and then switch back to fall. So these are really cool and they're excellent setters because they have a nice wide uh, frame on them. So they set really well in all the sizes and um, cool, right? I love that they're reversible. Two and one. And then we worked on some little canvases that I got and just put a little paint on them. And then these cute transfers. All these transfers uh, are in one set called Halloween Phrases. And they're all like, like a 5x5 five five size. And so there's those three. Two on this. That makes five. And then we have the Spooky which comes with this little fence. And this is where I did a paper towel press technique that we're gonna talk about today. So that's what I did yesterday. If you wanna learn how I did those, check out my live from yesterday. And I attached a little raffia bow on the back with staple and added a couple little uh, wooden cutout elements from the Dollar Tree. There is that and that. Fun little Halloween decor or gifts. I'm gonna get those out of the way. All right, then in the afternoon, after I said goodbye to y'all, I worked on some more um, paper towel presses. And that is a technique that I just happened to stumble on. I don't know if anybody else has done it before, but. When I was making this set of pumpkins, I do kind of a color wash on a lot of my surfaces with just watered down craft paint or maybe even chalk paste. And it was just a little heavy, a little too wet. So I pressed my paper towel on it and it left this uh, pattern on it from the pattern of the paper towel. And I thought, well, that's really cool. So I just dried it and let it stay, stay on there. And it's kind of across the whole pumpkin, but it's a little bit more heavy right there. So then on the small pumpkin, I carried it, the theme of it, onto this one, okay? So 
then yesterday I did that spooky sign. So I've only done a few of them, but we're going to do some more. So yesterday I did, I went down and went up to my kitchen and found another paper towel. One's from Bounty, one's from Brawny. And so one has the, um, the kind of the Argyle diamond pattern. And this one, which is like this. And then this one has a different pattern. And that's on this paper towel. So this one is, they have their name uh, in, in the towel. So you gotta watch where you're pressing that you don't get the name. Or if you do get the name, I just kinda take my brush and blur it out. Because I don't expect to have a perfect print anyway. I want it to be very worn and vintage. So I just kind of blur it out with my brush after I print it. So we have these two. I have these two. So I'm going to be on the lookout for other prints on paper towels. And I was, you know, I've been trying to think of uh, other things that you could use besides maybe a, a woven. I don't want to, I want to do something I could throw away. So. You know, I don't want to ruin something with paint, but, um, you know, there's probably some woven fabrics that would work. Maybe, like, just just a woven look, but, you know, you'd have to, like, cut up a piece of blanket or something. I don't know. So, I'm going to show you, Rosemary, how I did this. We're going to do it right now. Any other questions? Good morning, Susan. Hello, hello. So... I uh, did these four. These are all on the same board that uh, a sign that I painted over and then pressed on the paper towel. So I did these two. I haven't shown these yet on my Facebook page yet. So we did these two and then these two florals are just foliage. They're not really flowers, but. Okay, pretty cool, right? It just reminded me of old, worn wallpaper, maybe, or something like that. Very, very, very old. So, today I want to do these two little signs, and then I'm going to do a bigger one, too. So, um, starting out little, and then we'll go to a bigger one. And I'm just going to pick a couple of these. Um, I think on the bigger side, I'm going to use the um, pantry. So I thought these would be cute, you know, kind of with it. Leftovers are for quitters or cook, pray, eat, you know. This one's going to cover up a lot of your pattern in the behind, but that might look good too. So I will decide these after I get my press done. So I'm calling it a paper towel press. So we'll see how it goes. I love that worn look. Don't you? It's so cool. This time I'm going to work kind of in a gray-blue color of the background. And then I'll, on these, I'll probably chalk black on top because of the black frame. The other piece we're going to work on, and I'm do, actually I'm debating between working on a pantry design or just putting the chickens on it. But it's a gray frame. And I kind of wish it was painted black, but I didn't have any black signs that were like this size. So um, I may end up painting this black after we're done. So I'm either going to do the chickens on top of the paper towel press or pantry. So you can be thinking about that. Maybe you can help me decide which one you want to see. Okay, so I put a, uh, this was like a little baseball sign. I got on super clearance and I've painted it over and now we're going to do our paper towel press and I think I'll do these in the same press the same pattern um, what do they just do with my transfers uh, I'm so blind sometimes like sometimes they're right in front of me and I can't see them. I just want to what did I where did I put those? The little <laughs> um good 
degree. crazy. Oh yeah, they go right here. The ones with the eat the leftovers and forever more. It's going to be kind of hard to use these transfers if I can't find them. Here they are. Sometimes I like to look at the design and get a feel of what pattern would look best by it. So if it's a real angular design, I'll put the opposite, I'll put the circle one behind it. Like, see how this one has, has a point? I don't know. So I didn't want to do the pointed pattern behind it. I did the opposite. So I did more the rounded one. So I did this, even though this has kind of pointed leaves too, I just felt like with this round, that the diamond one would look good with this one. So I kinda, I kinda take that in consideration. You know, what's gonna look best on top. So, here are these little ones. I don't think it's gonna matter too much, but. Like with this one, I would put the argyle behind it. Just because it's very similar in shape to the roundish one. So, otherwise, these these two are not going to matter too much, I don't think. So I think I'll do... Uh, let's just get them out. This is a lot bigger font than this one. All right, I'll just do one of each. Yeah, let's see if I'm doing the same. But, and I don't know if I need to start with a fresh paper towel or if I can reuse ones I've already used. Because, you know, maybe they're not as absorbent if they have paint on them. That's something else I'll have to experiment with. But today, we'll use fresh ones, just in case. So I'm going to grab me a piece. And on this little sign, I can just use the half sheet. And I think this brand only has full-size sheets. Okay. So I don't want to waste a lot of paper towels. So... I think yesterday I did use these twice because I did two of these and I did two of these. So I did use them twice already. And I can always use them to wipe up stuff, you know, off my desk or whatever. So I don't want to feel like I'm totally wasting them. But, okay. So like I said, I'm going to do them kind of blues. Blue, blue is a really hot, trendy um, color now for home decor. So I'm going to do that. No, no, I did not make these. These are discount signs from the hobby store and I just painted over them. I rarely make my own frames. So we used to try to at first before Chocolate Tour came out with all their surfaces years two two, three years ago, but uh not so much now. Chocolate Tour services are awesome. But sometimes you need like they didn't have square little square ones before. Now they do, they have these, those 5x5s, five but, you know, these are already black, and I can just paint them, and my eyes are watering because I have really bad allergies, and they're just itching like crazy. So if I blink a lot, that's why I blink so much. Okay, so I'm going to take my wet brush, not too wet, but wet, if that makes sense. And I'm probably going to use both. This is called Cloudy Day. It's kind of a gray, light blue color. And this one is um, Midnight Blue. I don't want it too dark. But I might put in a little bit of that darker blue. If I want just a little bit of contrast in the coloring. And I just put a blot 
a little blop of it on, especially on this small of a surface. Because I'm going to ink on top in black, so it'll pretty much show up. And I need a little bit more water in it. You want it pretty wet. And that's why I was putting the paper towel on it the other day because it was too wet. And that's how I got the print. I'm just kind of working in my colors a little bit. And I have not tried this on a boutique board. I've only tried it on painted surfaces. Okay. Make sure y'all can see. So I got it, kind of got my blue, gray blue on there, kind of mixed in. And then I'm going to take my paper towel. I'm going to try to find the area without the word bounty on it. It's just here and here, so I should have a pretty good print. I'm just going to lay it on top and press down on top of that wet, watery paint. The more you press, the more it's going to pick up, obviously, because it absorbs. And you just pick it up. And look how cute that is. Right? This is so cool. I love it. And then I'll, I'll set this aside, but I will blow dry it before I um, put any uh, chalk paste on it. Okay, so let's do this one. We'll do it in the other one. We'll do the same thing. This one has a, a little bit more paint on it. Okay, I'm gonna put a bit of the darker blue, just a smidgen. Okay, I'm gonna spread that around. This will probably be a little bit darker, but that's okay. I like them to be unique. They're all going to be different because they're hand done. That's the whole advantage of being handcrafted. So take a paper towel. This one would be good to use on a big one because there's like no words on it at all. Barely, a little bit right there. The B and the R. That's it. That's pretty good. So I'm going to lay this on there. Okay, press it. I just get so excited. It's like chalking for the first time. Like, whoa, that's so, so cool, right? You got to give me some hearts for that. That's pretty cool. I need some hearts. Woohoo! Love it. All right, I'm going to dry. Dry, dry, dry. Wow! That's so cool. It's going to look really sharp with a black, a black uh, transfer on it. Super cool. Isn't it awesome? And what's cool is, you know, some I, I use a lot of layering of uh, patterns. And when you chalk a pattern, you know, you still have it raised, like it's not smooth. Well, here you're, you're going to have a smooth surface. So, how cool. 
You don't have that chalk uh, layering buildup. So it kind of eliminates that. So they're dry. And now we can just chalk on our cute little pattern. Um, these would all be so cute on them. I don't know which one to do. I can't decide. I wish I had four of these. I only have two. I used one the other day for that latte sign, or that coffee sign. I had three, but anyway, this is going to cover up a lot of that, so I don't know if I want to use that. Well, maybe these two? That way it'll, sh it'll show most of the pattern underneath, because I just love that pattern. So I'm going to get my black chalk face out. Get that ready to go. I think it's already out. Here it is. Take my camera down just a little bit. Okay. Black chalk paste. So don't do too heavy of a um, like if you if you're gonna use black, I would recommend using black. Unless you're going to put like red, chalk red on top of it. Or th really that's the best kind that looks good on a black and white pattern is probably red. But try to, try to keep it a muted, softer color so that whatever you chalk on top is going to stand out. Which is obviously black um, is the best. But like I used, but even on this one I wanted it to be more subtle. And I didn't really chalk on top of it. Um, and then that black spooky one, I did gray on top of black, so it was very subtle in the background. But with these patterns, you know, you have very, with these transfers, you're having very little on top of it. So you're still going to, you're still going to be able to see that pattern back behind. And I hope I made the right decision using a light, a very small pattern on top of it. I don't know, we're going to see if it shows up well. As you know, if it doesn't doesn't show up well, you know what we do? We just paint over everything. <laughs> Start over. And like it might be better to use a bolder pattern, or like this one. I'm not sure. Let's see what the what the smaller fonts and the smaller graphic looks like. I don't know. We're gonna find out. I'm hope in my mind it's showing up, but we'll find out. Since the blue is a little bit more of a contrast than if I just used like a cream or something that would have been tone on tone. But I really like the blue and the black together. I think that looks really pretty. a paper or just a plain background. Okay. Now let's do this one. I think a soft pink or dusty rose would be pretty. This with the uh, you know a whole floral thing or who knows I mean it's endless. Yeah. Cute little signs, aren't they cute? Love, love, love. Make sure this is good. Aren't they cute? I mean, this looks like something you would buy. <laughs> I mean, it 
doesn't look... I'm not going to brag or anything, but Jock Couture just makes stuff so professional, I guess. I don't know what else to say, but isn't it cool? I do need that pokey tool. I ordered that uh, new, uh, what are we calling it, tool, um, detail tool, I think it's called. I ordered that yesterday. Okay, so let's move on to the bigger piece. I better lay these back on. You know, we're not supposed to soak our new transfers in the water now. Because um, they're made differently. We're supposed to just wash them quickly under the water. So I'll just go lay these aside and I'll wash them later. And move this. All right, now we have this repurposed sign and the hanger's on the top, so I'll be moving the hanger over here. And I'm still debating whether to do the chickens, which I thought was still available, but I just looked it up. But the sheep is on the this collection, but the um, chickens aren't. But the pantry is. So let's do pantry, we'll kind of keep it with the whole food theme the other two and we'll just do that right I should have made the two little ones the same pattern not that they're going to be sold together I always think people are going to buy my whole set but they don't they buy one piece so kind of thinking pantry I like to lay my fork and spoon like this. The spoon's kind of heavy and I put it on the bottom, put the fork on the top. So probably, I do all of this in here. Something like this. Well, we're going to put the paper towel press underneath it, and it's going to make a huge difference. And I may end up painting that frame black so it matches this stuff over here. Probably will, even though it's a really cool warm gray color. But I might make these in, in the gray and do this in black, so maybe the gray will look good. We'll see, we'll see when we're done. Just like in photography, uh, I'm, I remember the kids when they were in 4-H and we took photography projects to the fair. Almost everything looked better in a black mat. I kind of feel that's the same way with other artwork too. So, all right. Back in the day, let me shake these up a little bit. Missed the first part. I'll have to go back and watch all. Yeah, I just basically I showed uh, what I've been making with the paper towel presses and what I made yesterday on my live, Joanne. Um, so, and I just made these two. I don't know if you saw that part, but we're gonna paper towel press this one just like we did these. So you're not missing out on too much. Uh, okay, <clears throat> I should do the big one since we don't have to deal with the whole uh, word on here. Like I said, it just had a little, I can not hardly even find it. It had like a B and an R. And like I said, I don't even see it. So this big paper towel, we're going to have to match up. A little bit but we'll see how it goes this is the first time I've done a big piece I have done a little bit of matching but not this much so we'll see how it goes it's just paint guys if we don't like it we'll paint over it so wet brush I want to work kind of 
quickly because, you know, paint dries fast. But you just keep watering it. brushing the frame. Okay, so we got our watered down cloudy color on. And let's brush in a few dots of this midnight blue. Even when I color my oh pumpkin cutouts or anything, yeah, I'm getting on the, I definitely will be painting this frame black. I keep getting paint on it. It doesn't come off as easy like chalk paste does when you get it on something. water in some of the areas because that's what the paper towel will pick up. Make sure I'm getting the colors a little bit evened out. Some areas I like it a little bit different color than the other areas. It's a little bit heavier. Okay, here we go. I kind of want the edge so I can match up. Oh, so cool. Now the trick is hopefully I try to line up the pattern again. And you can kind of see it on the back. of a line right in there and I don't know if I can kind of get rid of it or not. That's pretty cool. Alright, so I'm going to dry it. Yeah, definitely going to try it. It's super fun. And it doesn't have to be like totally perfect because it's the background and a lot of your transfers are going to cover it up anyway, so. Nice and dry. I think this will look sharper with a black frame, so I probably will paint it black. We'll see. I, I'm pretty sure I will. I'm 
make sure it's nice and dry because this was pretty wet with all that water on it. it might not be a bad idea to put a little bit of wax on it because it feels um, like maybe they could stick to it let's just give it a try kind of depends on your transfer like this this transfer is one of those transfers that weren't overly sticky so it's not sticking so I'm not going to worry about it but if it was a newer transfer that's of the newer batches, they are way more sticky. So I'd probably uh, either super fuzz it or just just put a little wax on it. I think is is the best way to go because then you know your transfer is not going to stretch out. It'll lift up super easily. So pretty cool. All right, well, let's put our fork and spoon on, and I'm going to do those. Um, a couple shades of gray, probably. We would definitely want to use a um, it's like storm. And then I have some old elephant gray, which is a lighter gray. And there's grayish. I always forget about grayish. In fact, I might use the elephant gray. There's not a whole lot of difference. You can see all the shades. This is elephant gray. This is an older gray they don't make anymore. It's kind of more of a true gray, maybe with a hint of, of lavender in it. But um, then you have your storm, which is kind of a putty, putty gray. And then you have your grayish, which is kind of a gray beige color. Um, this may not show up very well. So I might use these two. So I can have a, I might just grab them all out here. I kind of like, I want to put a little bit lighter color in here because that's kind of where the handle of a spoon or a fork raises up and usually it hits the light a little bit brighter so I might put like a little bit of the lighter gray in here and then blend it into the darker grays and you could even on the spoon do a little bit of the lighter gray on the outside and blend it in with the darker we'll see if it makes a difference those are my ideas but it doesn't mean that always is how it's going to turn out Maybe mix some kind of that darkest color with the black paint, give it a touch of color. On the frame you're talking about, but still be dark. Okay. I was going to paint this frame before I started the live, but that would take a while, and I thought, well, let's just see what it looks like before I do that. What is this? Storm. I need to get a new one out. This one's pretty chunky. water everything down. So what else is going on? Let's see. Yes, on the frame. What is the surface? What is that surface like? It was a sign and I painted over it with, I, I like to use fusion mineral paint that has a primer, paint, and sealer all in one. So that's what I like to use. But I think any paint would can work on top of, you know, painting over a sign. It's just what I use. A comes in a jar. And I don't have to deal with 
you know, gown of paint or, and it just screws the lid on. But you know, some people just use chalk paint, craft chalk paint. Um, but this, what this feels like, it kind of leaves that um, chalk paint where it's not sealed in, I guess. That's why I would say maybe we should put some uh, wax on it. But this transfer is not one of those ones that aren't very sticky, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to probably put these pretty close together. I just want to make sure I get the placement where I want it. If you're just joining, I did the paper towel press on this. I will end up painting this black. I know I will. I feel like the two textures are fighting each other. This and this. It's like too much, too similar. So I want to paint it black. Pretty sure. I guess that pretty good. All right, we need a couple minis, mini squeegees here. Just gonna kind of put the lighter gray on thick for a little bit, and then we'll go to the storm. It's kind of got some chunks of chalk paste in it, so I'm going to blend where the two colors meet with my finger. Hopefully it shows up well enough against the blue. It's kind of light. So, I think if this is black, that will help. If this was black, I think it will help show up. Okay, I'm going to dry that. Same thing. See this transfer is not hardly sticking at all. It's one of those that didn't stick very well.
here's where I could use one of those paper towels. Possibly. If I decide it doesn't show up um, against that blue, then I'll probably go over it again with black. The rest of the sign I'm going to do in black, the words. We'll see. Making sure it's level. Yeah, it's like hardly sticking at all. But we can still make it work. I'm gonna load up the black. I'm gonna start from the middle and go out because it's not sticking very well. Getting all the squeegee lines off. Alright, and then we'll do this little guy down here. Grab my black fusion metal paint and paint this real quick. I'll put a little painter's tape on the sign and then um, paint that real quick. I don't think it'll take long. We'll see what looks better. I think it will. And it'll coordinate really well with um, those two other little pieces we did. chalk paste away and we'll get out my cardboard and my paint and paint that real quick. I can almost guarantee that fork and knife will show up better. This 
blow dry this. So what's everyone else doing today? Everyone shocking? I hope. It's Friday, it's the weekend. Can you believe it? I'm gonna make sure it's pressed down really well against the frame. paint the frame so I can't have that up on there. <laughs> Gonna chalk and hit the lumber yard. <laughs> All right. Do you like to buy, what do you like to buy at the lumber yard? Are you doing porch boards or what are you making? Do you buy the chalkboards there? Do you make your own chalkboards or what do you do? Go to the lumber yard too. I like the smell of lumber. <laughs> I messed up my shirt. Either the board has a curve in it or the tape. I'm gonna guess the board. <laughs> I'm gonna go smart face. Just a little bit too long. All right. Let's grab a piece of cardboard, a black paint. new one. I mean, I've used it, but my lumberyard guy lets me pick out my own boards. My lumberyard guy. <laughs> well, that's good. You should be able to pick out your own boards.
This may only take one coat. That's how great this cream is. But I'll probably put two on. This is why I wear just big old t-shirts <laughs> when I craft because I never know when I'm going to be painting. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I get paint on myself. It's, it's going to make a huge, huge difference. Guarantee it. Oops. Now it's going to be harder to to uh, grab it. You know what's a good idea is put down a few jars of paste underneath so it lifts it up and then you can paint it easier. We are heading to Centerville, where we used to live. We're in the process of selling the rest of our property, but we've been using it as storage, so we have to get our stuff out of the one building and haul them back. So that's what we get to do tomorrow. Nothing too fun. But Just uh, put another coat around the top and take off the paint and it's going to look really sharp with that black against that blue just like in the little signs. I think it's going to look cool. hands clean. All my PJs have paint spots on them. <laughs> so you say you paint in your jammas? Is that what you're saying? Um, let me see. Where can I start? Come 
cover on because this has wet paint on it. Blow dry that. Maybe we'll pick it up. Doesn't that look better? Try it. Alright, guys. Let's just dry it up a little bit. This paint, this uh, fusion metal paint dries pretty quickly with the dryer. So. cardboard here. You can see it better. Look how cute that is. There. See that? You can kind of see the difference in the grays and the silverware if you look closely. That turned out pretty cute. I like the back. Yeah. I knew the black would look much better. And you can still see the silverware pretty well. If I put a little bit of um, and, uh, stained wax on it, that will um, enhance the silverware a little bit more because it kind of brings out the edges of wherever you uh, paste it, chalk paste. So it might enhance them a little bit. It's pretty cool. I like the blue and the black together. So let that set, continue to dry up a little bit. Here's these two little ones, looking really cute. So, there you go guys. Paper towel press, give it a try. Show me what you've done with it when you do it. I'd love to see it. Uh, anything else? Because we're doing pretty good. All right. Have a great weekend. You're working on pumpkins, Joanne. Put in the lumber yard. Good. Okay. Cool. Have a great weekend, guys. And I, wow, I chalked on uh, live every day this week, which is kind of unusual for me. But, you know, the grandkids are back in school, so I'm not having to watch them so it's kind of fun that they're back at school i'm anxious to see how it goes for them and uh gives me more time to chalk which we need to for the holiday season coming up so hey have a good one and i'll chalk with you later bye bye